Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to get into something that uh, came up yesterday. I was talking with uh, my friend Reed, and uh, we were discussing the uh, memory the problems go wrong as we uh, <laughs> as we as we as we begin to age and uh so uh the uh uh you know it's like that leonard cohen song he, he says uh my looks are gone my hair is gray i ache in the places i used to play and uh as we get older there is um certain things happen and the question becomes how much of that is inevitable and how much of that can we do something about? So, you know, one of the, you know, sort of the go with the flow ideas like, yeah, well, everybody gets old and, you know, deal with it. Um, but there's another possibility that, um, that uh, I'm looking at is, is that we can use our, conscious awareness to change the dynamic somewhat. So one of the things particularly we were focusing on was the deterioration of the nervous system, how, uh, you know, some people uh, are going to get this um, peripheral neuropathy, which can be felt as a, uh, you know, like a, uh, either a numbness or even like a painful, like a, a stabbing kind of pins and needles kind of kind of feeling but it also extends to things like arthritis and uh, other things can we change our our physical body via our the interaction with our mind and with a mindful practice and so the I want to kind of dig into that a little bit and so the one of the theories that I kind of like about aging is that there a, a lot of the the problems uh, are, are, are blamed on what uh, some call epigenetic noise and epigenetics is the effect is a science that, that studies the effect of environment both internal and external on gene expression and so how your body mind takes the information from the genes and is uh, creates new proteins which then do cool stuff inside your body so um as you change your environment both internal and external you can make things bad or worse as we know if we you know eat you know twinkies and slurpees all day we know that that affects our genetic expression same thing if we exercise and we breathe, breathe and 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 feel um, meditate or whatever it that that will also affect our genetic expression, and so the the can we do something with that? And my uh, I'm posing this as a question. And I'm, I'm by not in any way an expert in this area. So it's just something that this, uh, it makes me say, huh, what else is possible here? And going back to Taiji Tran through the Western Gate, you know, one of the things I, I, I was putting forth there was that the idea that entropy, which is the tendency of a system to either lose energy or to fall into a state of, disorganization and you know there's other ways of expressing entry but that's those are two of my favorites you know one is like a thermonuclear or not thermo, a thermodynamic expression which is that a system has a certain amount of energy and that's what keeps it that amount of energy or that that energy configuration is what allows that system to maintain itself and here a system we're talking about like a physical body or something and as it loses energy, it starts to not stick together quite as well. It starts to decay or, or fall apart. So um, that entropy is inversely proportional to the amount of coherence in the system. That is, 
And it's almost a truism. It's like saying that the, the more something falls apart, the less together it is. It's like, you know, coherence is an expression of wholeness. So the less whole something is, the more fragmented it is. It, it, it really doesn't give us any new information, but it's a catchy bumper sticker. So, um, and what it does is it says, if I can bring more coherence into the body mind and do things that encourage that coherence, that maybe there will be less entropy. And here, in a, we can see it as an expression of that epigenetic noise, because the epigenetic noise is as as the body gets older, there's it accumulates these these insults to its integrity, and it starts to like an old car starts to develop shakes and rattles and uh, and pings and and it starts to not be as smoothly functioning as it once was. So if uh, this accumulation of epigenetic noise, which is noise in the nervous system, which clouds the ability of the genetic expression, then things start to decay. And in case of, in the case of like say, purple neuropathy, that's kind of what it is. It's, it's the nervous system is, is so noisy that it, what's coming across the sensory neural input is distorted either that or it's shut down so that you get like a numbness. So can we, by creating more coherence and bringing that coherence into parts of the body which are, tend to be ignored, will that create an effect? And um, my, my preliminary sense is that yeah yeah it does it does help and whether it actually corrects a specific malfunctioning body system uh, or not it just the fact of doing these things has other benefits that make things better anyway so it's like what do i got to lose in the in that category so we fall back into a uh, like a real fundamental Taiji principle, which is the E leads the Qi and the Qi leads the blood, which is a, a way of saying that your what I'm calling a superconscious mind, but your your higher mind that which is your that, that which transcends your rational thinking mind, but is actually that calm, peaceful, centered gap between thoughts mind leads the chi and the chi leads the blood. So if you can get into that, that calm, relaxed state and then direct your attention, it leads your body, body's resources to the area that you're bringing your attention to and it starts the healing process. Doing this also has the effect of calming and balancing your autonomic nervous system by getting by getting more parasympathetic activity. Because whenever you're you're in the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest part of the nervous system, that's where the the, the healing occurs. We have a tendency to be way over overbalanced to the side of the go, go, go part, which is the sympathetic nervous system. And one of the observations I made is that, you know, in decades of clinical uh, observation, as well as my own personal research, is that the thinking mind tends to crank up the sympathetic nervous system. And it creates responses which are stress responses. So if we don't balance it, and, and, and doing that is just fine, and that's part of life, that's, that's what we do. We like to stress ourselves, but if we don't get a chance to pause and reset, go to the parasympathetic, 
often and for a sustained period, then we tend to wear out faster. Things wear down. And so you need to kind of let the thing let the, let the let the thing cool off a little bit every now and then so that you can we can um, reconfigure, reset, and and bring back into a state of wholeness, a state of homeostasis, uh, calm your calm your stuff down and be able to get nice and relaxed and and be able to heal. So what we're talking about here is in our practice, is, there is this oscillation between that doing and the non-doing between the motion and the stillness. This is a, a topic that I've discussed many times you know, in this series. And it keeps coming back to that and it's, it's worth checking out. So if we can, in that stillness, direct our awareness and use the E, the wisdom mind to lead the chi, or the energy, the and that brings resources. It leads the blood, and blood here is is just another name for all the the body's resources that are necessary to do the healing. So my hypothesis is that yeah, if we if we do these things often and diligently, good things will happen. That we can theoretically repair these different parts of the body, particularly those of us who have uh, had an attitude of road hard and put away wet, you know, for most of our lives, we push, 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 and then collapse and, and then go up again and push, push, push again. And if you can find these, the, a way to intersperse some, some of that calm space where it's not just the calmness, not just the stillness, but it's what do we do in the stillness? What do we do to direct our awareness so that we can bring about a directed healing to specific parts? So um, uh, before I get into stuff, uh, any thoughts or questions on this? Anybody wanna, wanna pipe in here? Rick, you got some? As I've mentioned, I've been doing a lot of your exercises every morning. And it, uh, speaking for my own experience, yeah, it's helped enormously on a variety of things. And now I try to get into the state where I can tell myself to repair, regenerate, heal. And again, it certainly seems to be working. Cool. Great. Thanks. Anybody else? Sharon. Um, I'll just mention my own experience where I have, which I think is something that's measurable. Um, if you've heard of pH testing of the body to see if you're acid or alkaline and being acid is a uh, lots of disease and conditions can be be from an acidic environment. So one would want to be more alkaline. I can get up in the morning and test myself. And it's obviously my cortisol levels have been high. And then I can spend some time getting coherent, doing various breathing, meditations, test myself, and bam, I'm alkaline. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Yes. It's it's measurable. Measurable. That's that's great. Yeah. Good. And it happens in a very short period of time. Well, no, not really. <laughs> I don't know oh, what no. you consider short. I sometimes I spend like an hour doing things. That's that's short. In the morning is that short? That's that's short. Okay, short. all right. I would acid to acid to alkaline. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you're, you're, of an hour. That's that's kind of almost instantaneous. Yes, yes. So, you you are, okay. you are right. I was just thinking a different way. <laughs> <laughs> You tell us to do things a thousand times a day, and I know it doesn't happen that quick, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, um, it's something that, <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's, it's a measurable thing, and it happens in a very finite, you know, period yes, of time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Good, Peter. You're on, on mute, Peter. 
that. Uh, wonderful topic and, uh, and especially interesting as we move along. Um, I, have, I have had some thoughts, you know, developing over a long time, you know, kind of um, possibly, you know, optimistic, perhaps wish fulfilling along the same lines. And, you know, I want to, I think something that, well, to, you know, to say it quickly, I remember when I was in grad school, I was taking a biochemistry course and I became very fascinated learning about molecular genetics and the, uh, you know, the process of, of copying. You know, one notion, simple notion of aging is that copying errors creep into the, uh, the whole maintenance and, um, and uh, of structure and process. Um, and I, I really found it very beautiful, molecular genetics, but I, I also had the thought because I was in the, in the process of moving from a physicalist view of the world to a more metaphysical view that the molecular genetic story known to science was really only a shadow of the, or a reflection of the real process of ontogenesis of the, you know, of, you know, the, um, the creation and maintenance of our structure and process. And long story short, you know, that was long, many decades ago. And it, it led me finally uh, to, to some confidence in the notion that of, of the intelligence, the creative intelligence of Chi itself as, as sort of the organizer and manager of our uh, structure and process of our, you know, functioning. And uh, which is optimistic because that suggests that if we develop our chi and you know make it uh, coherent, clear, strong, move it around everywhere, flowing freely, that we'll have fewer copying errors and everything. You know, well, the uh, the, whole, the the real functioning of our system will be um, you know will will hold together. Uh, so I'm wondering how that fits into the picture that you were. Well, I think doing. when you're talking about copying errors, I think that that fits right in with the idea of epigenetic noise. Right, right. So it's it's it fits right in there. And also uh, um, to take this out of the woo a little bit and put it into scientific uh, research, the uh, I mean, we've gone just in you know a span of maybe 30 years from. The idea that uh, neurogenesis, that is creating new nerve cells, is is a crazy idea. To oh no, not that that happens, and they're they're still cautious about which places, which parts of the brain can create uh, new nerve cells. But it, that's a uh, that's that's an accepted thing, and um, also other other kinds of cells. The um, uh, one of the experiments I was just reading about was the idea, or not an idea, but the an experiment that was done at the Harvard Medical School, where they're working with mice, and they were they used they used very uh, old elderly mice, and induced a glaucoma-like condition, and then used epigenetic reprogramming to create the vision of a young mouse in that and as it was successfully done and there's it, there's uh, scientific uh, papers written on that so it's something that is it's not completely woo woo it's something that has some some you know scientific experimentation behind it and what we're trying to do is say okay if it's something that some scientists in a laboratory can do uh, is just something that I can do through my meditation through my gong fu, through my qigong, et cetera. And that uh, maybe with a broader brush, uh, finding energetic coherence throughout the whole system, which then, you know, using the idea like the rising tide lifts all boats idea that, that the healings occur just by creating more, um, more, more chi flow and more and better circulation. If I can do that, if I bring more consciousness to the parts of my body, which tend to be breaking down and also cause us to withdraw, 
because that's one of the things that if something is painful, we have a tendency to back away from it. They have a tendency if uh, if we got arthritis or neuropathy or whatever, tendency to not want to exercise quite as much, which then contributes to more deterioration, more entropy in the nervous system. So doing you using that as our our, our guide there. Let's uh, let's play with with us a little bit and. Um, We'll start with one that's um, doing it sitting. And then we're going to do some standing stuff. And if uh, you have any difficulty standing or you know whatever you, you can do, any of this stuff can be done sitting. But uh, it's primarily a, a, an exercise in using your awareness, directing your awareness so that you can you can lead the chi. The chi leads the blood. So let's just begin and sit upright or stand. But um, right now we're primarily focusing on the sitting. I'm going to be focusing on that. And and you want to reach with the crown of your head, open up the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull that the at the base of the skull, at the top of the neck. Feel the contact with the floor under your feet. And reach with your elbows a little bit and just feel that, feel your elbows. Point and reach with your index fingers. And feel the energetic coherence throughout, the, throughout your body. Feel yourself going into the gap between thoughts. Your mind clears, you get calm, centered. And now feel the ball of your left foot. You can kind of push down with it if you, if you like, just, just want to Feel what you're doing there is you're establishing contact. You're actually extending your awareness through the body and making contact with the sensation prior to the perception. So here, we're using this this language, that sensation is what the what the the body the signals the body is sending, the electrical signals that the body is sending to the brain. And perception is what the brain does with it. So you want to feel your the ball of your left foot. And before your brain starts to make a story out of it, or your mind, your brain, whatever, starts to make a, a story out of it and describe what you're doing or think about what you're doing, just feel that. Get that sensation. Now let that go and feel the ball of your right foot. Now feel your left heel. Feel that point of contact with the ground. Each time we do this, each time you do this, you are creating and enhancing your neural connections. Feel, let that go and feel the heel of your right foot. And notice the effect this has on your whole body whenever you direct your attention to that feeling. And let that go and feel the big toe. Press down with the big toe of your left foot. And notice the effect that has on your body and your mind. And let that go. Press down with the big toe of your left, your right foot. 
Let's let that feeling fill up your awareness. Notice that you're in the gap between thoughts. It's just the feeling. And let that go. Feel your left hand on your leg. Let that go. Feel your right hand on your right leg. Let that go. Now feel your left hand with your right leg. And to do this, you may have to move your hand a little bit just to establish that, but you want to feel the hand with the leg. So to do this, you have to compartmentalize it a little bit. You have to control the sensations that are coming from the hand and amplify the sensations coming from the leg. And let that go. And feel your right hand with your left leg. Again, you can press down with that, move it around a little bit and really just establish that connection with your leg. And it's also learning how to put the hand sensations on mute. They're still happening there in the background, but it's like uh, you're letting the leg take a solo and the hand is just one of the background instruments keeping the beat, the rhythm section, but it gets a chance, to, the leg gets a chance to shine and let that go. So then now let, the, let it all go and just broaden your awareness. So you're receiving all that information at once without thinking about it. And just allow your mind to tune into the symphony that's occurring throughout your body. Your 80 trillion cells are all playing nice together right now in a highly coherent way. And this creates its own field, a highly coherent field. And in that field, then the body gets to direct the chi where you need it to go. You get to circulate it. And let all that go. And thank you. Okay, so uh, any, um, how'd that go for people? Please uh, give me an idea of, uh, you like that, Rick? <laughs> That's a jolly old elf. <laughs> good, good. Okay, uh, Valerie. Okay, I was doing fine until my left leg was to feel my right hand. I don't get it. Okay. Expound, please. Um, can, you, can you feel anything with your left leg? Can you feel your pant leg, your, yeah. your, your pants? Okay, so you're, you're, you're getting... You're getting sensory information from, from your left leg, your left thigh, right? Yes. Okay. So now put your hand there. My right hand there? No, no, your left hand. But you said left. 
Okay, okay, sorry, go ahead. So just feel your left hand on your yes. left leg. Yes. And can you feel that with your left leg? Yes. Okay. That's it. It's a real simple thing, real simple request. It. Uh, feel, you feel your hand with your leg? Yes. Okay, so now feel your other hand with that leg. Uh, Rick, you did, Rick, you did say feel your right hand with your left leg at one point. Okay, that's uh, I think what Valerie's confused about. I mean, okay, she's not I, confused. I, if I did, I, I'm sorry. I, I believe I said uh, uh, I, I thought I said something different. But uh, if that is the case, then I, uh, I apologize for the uh, the erroneous instructions. Yeah, we could turn this into a game of Twister. Scott. Yeah, um, we've. I, I'm pretty sure you've done it before, or or, uh, or at least I've I've done it before. Where, yeah, you can feel your right hand with your left leg, your left hand with your left leg. You can feel your right foot with we've your done left. That. We've done that before. I, I just wanted to keep it real yeah. simple for this, and I'm sorry if it, that that came across wrong. But the uh, so just to go back and just feel your feel your left hand with your left with your left leg. Now feel your right hand with your right leg, and uh, and so just and that that's it. Basically, you just want to establish those those connections there. What we're doing is we're activating the sensory neural network, which is largely at the preconscious level. Most of the sensory information, about a million to one, of uh, uh, bits of information that are coming into your body, into your brain rather, from your from your senses, um, is most of it's discarded. There's about a million to one reduction there. Your conscious mind is filtering out most of that information. When we enter into a superconscious state, we're moving away that narrow focus. We're switching from a very close focus macro lens where we're kind of focusing on one little dew drop and then we're uh, on a leaf and then we're going to a wide angle and we're saying not just the leaf, not just the plant, but not just the garden, but the whole, the whole yard, you know, so it expands and, and so we're going to that, that wide angle view then we don't we don't have any depth of perception we all there is is just now and um there is awareness of what's going on and you can your mind is very capable of being alerted to any changes and saying oh i need to bring my attention over there or over there or whatever boom and then you can bring it back into that that narrow focus again so the, being able to shift between the narrow focus, directing attention to any one thing, to wide angle, then allows being able to shift back and forth, gives your brain exercise. It gives it, it allows you to shift out of fixed patterns of relationship with your world. Your world then opens up and you, everything, even if the things seem to be the same, they're different because you're seeing with new eyes. So let's take this and move this into a, a standing posture. And uh, we'll add a few wrinkles to the, uh, to the exercise. So step out. Yeah. So let's get the three pillars in. First pillar, we're going to, you know, we're going to establish our central equilibrium and feel the weight over the balls of the feet. Feel that contact. Feel the weight spread throughout the whole foot, but you want to feel the contact point, primary contact point with the ball of the foot. You know, reach for the crown of your head, tuck in the chin and 
open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. You know, your neck getting longer as you reach up. At the same time, you're softening your knees and sinking down. So you're moving in two directions at once. You're reaching with the crown, you're sinking into the ground. So we're creating these poles in opposition. Relax your lower back. And allow your coccyx to drop. Level out your pelvic bowl so that your, your hips are not pitched forward. You're, you're feeling them nice and relaxed. Your knees are, are, are not bent so much as just unlocked. Reach with the elbows, arms are rounded. Reach with the clavicular notch. Just feel yourself being pulled upward, opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Point and reach with your index fingers. And feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole body. Now feel the balls of both feet. Feel those contact points. And by ball, I mean the on the big toe line, that that joint right below the big toe, big knobby one. Feel that contacting the ground. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Not changing your weight at all, just feel that. Feel the heel contacting the ground without changing the, the contact point of the left ball. Feel the outside of your foot. Press down with the big toe on your left foot. Feel that contact there. We're awakening a nervous system now by doing this. Now, feel your thumb as you push down with the big toe. Feel the two together. Now feel the second toe. One beside the big toe, let the big toe go. Second toe, let the thumb go and, and reach with your index finger, your left index finger. Feel those two together. Feel your middle finger and your middle toe on the left foot. Feel the ring finger on your left hand. Feel the fourth toe. Feel them together. Feel the little finger, the fifth toe. Now press down with all the toes and feel with all the fingers on the left hand. So all the left toes, all the left, hand, left fingers, and feel them together. And feel the effect that's having on 
your mind and your body. And feel the shift in the energy. Feel in your hand and notice the activity that's occurring there. Feel the increased circulation. You may also feel increased circulation in your foot. Now we're gonna let that go. Feel the ball, the big toe on the, on the right foot. And the thumb, and bring those together. Feel the connection. The second toe and the index finger. The middle toe, the middle finger. You have the ring finger and the fourth toe. Fifth toe and fifth finger. Feel those together. Now press down with all the toes, the right foot. Feel the fingertips of the right hand. And feel the energy in your right hand. Let that go. Now feel your left hand and your left foot. And your awareness there. Let that go. Feel your right hand, your right foot. Let that go. Now feel the ball of your left foot. Set your left knee. And very slowly. Spiral down to the left. So you're releasing at the quad, at the hip joint, spiraling down, emptying out the right leg and filling up the left. Do yourself doing that very deliberately without any motion, sidewards motion of your hip joint. You're just releasing down, loading up. So now you've got about 70% of your weight in your left leg. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. So you're starting to establish your substantiality in your right leg. It's gonna become the, the dominant leg. Feel that spiral down to the left into your right hip joint. So you're starting to load up the right leg, emptying out the left. And turn to the right, very slowly, very deliberately, rotating. And feel yourself about 70% now in your right leg. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left leg. You're sitting down into that left leg and when you do that you start to empty out the right leg and turn you're loading up that left leg now it's got about 70 percent of the weight 
it's the substantial leg. Now with your, in that position, you're releasing down, feeling into that, feel the toes on your left foot. Feel them, press those down into the, into the floor and feel, feel the feedback that you get from that. Your sensory neural network is responding. It's sending signals through your nervous system and into your brain. It's getting a little workout. It's the you're cranking up the amount of electricity because electricity is the way that the is the carrier wave for this information. These electrical signals are what's are what's traveling through the uh, through the neurons. going into your brain. Your brain then converts that electricity into sensation, into uh, perception. Now feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Start to establish that as your foundation. Release down into the right leg. You're starting to load that up. You're sitting down with that leg. Getting very sung and turn very slowly, very deliberately. Notice as you're loading up the right leg, you're emptying out the left. Turn back to center. And back to 50-50. And just pause for a moment and just feel into your body. Feel the activity that's occurring there. Feel the enhanced circulation. There is electrical activity occurring. So tune into that if you can. But just notice that there's sensations. And even if you don't have names for the sensations, it's OK. Just feel them. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right leg. Step in with the left foot. Breathe, take a deep breath, hands come up. And as you exhale, disappear the chi. Just push, it's like pushing down a plunger, discarding all that energy, creating space for the nature chi to come in. Pause for a moment and just feel into the emptiness. Okay, please have a seat. Okay. Stand, you had some? You're on mute, on mute, Stan. You're on mute, oh, Stan. Okay. Yes, uh, call it a baby question. A baby uh, question, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, when you're doing, let's say, you, whichever uh, hand and foot together, uh, would it hurt to, because it seems like you can't always uh, get, get that feeling, but if I go from the, let's say from the hand and follow and trace it down to the foot, I seem to have a better chance at it. Uh, can you feel I, your hand? Can you feel your hand? Yes, I can feel Can you feel your hand. foot? 
Yes. Okay, so but the I it's think feeling I up do. together. What's that? I think I do. I'm not quite sure. That's why I, I think I have to try it a few times. That's why I'm asking about the baby step. Or well, I, the, the, let me just interrupt there. Just the, 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 what you want to do there is it is in the trying that hmm. the work gets done. Oh, okay. It is in the actually doing the trying, the actual the effort is what makes this thing happen because it particularly if, if, if your nervous system is in need of this, it, it, it requires an effort on your part to be able to, to change it out from its, um, uh, its uh, inertia. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's stuck in a, a particular state. So it needs kind of, uh, needs, a, needs a push, need to push start the car. So, uh, so that's that's what, what what happens there. So yes, yeah, so keep working on that and just play with All it. Right. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Um, I I just want to report on a little experience that I felt um, when we had gone from fully feeling both the left hand and the left foot at the same time, and then we went to feeling the then we got eventually to feeling fully feeling the right hand and right foot at the same time, I thought to myself, well, let's see if we can feel both sides at the same time. And when I did that, all of a sudden it said to me, oh, this is how we learn to levitate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I look forward to your report. <laughs> yes. I'll be working on that. Definitely. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you had something. Scott, you had something? Um, yeah. Um, just, I just had a, just a, like a ridiculously insane, stupid amount of energy in my body. <laughs> Is that a scientific measurement? Ridiculously insane, stupid? <laughs> right. Right. If it was effing stupid, that's off the charts. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, I mean, literally, it's like it was like I was standing on the bow of a, a ship in a storm. It was like my body was just, you know, it was like everything was moving. Now, you, I mean, what do you do when it's just like that insane? Just, just kind, just kind of ride it, and not. I mean, you know, it's like the body wants to move sometimes, and sometimes, you know, should you go with the movement or or? Depends on what what game you're playing. So. In this particular game, we're trying to rein that in into stillness and upgrade the tolerance of your body mind for handling ridiculously insane, stupid amounts of energy. <laughs> so um, the the easy answer is, oh, uh, I have I have this. I'm just going to get rid of it. I'll just go do something and, and, and dump it away. It's like, and you can, and that 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 perfectly legitimate thing to do. But in an exercise like this, we're saying, no, no, I want to ride this baby and see where it takes me. Because what's happening there, whenever you get that, you know, critical mass of energy, it brings about transformation. It says, oh, how can I stuff a hundred pounds of shit into a five pound bag? And, yes. and you uh, you need a bigger bag. And that's mm -hmm. where the transformation occurs. So oh, I, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, now it felt like if I kept holding it in, I was going to pass Richard on the way up. <laughs> well, is the thing, the, the, I, I think for me, the, the key is to not hold it in, but to be a conduit. Mm. So if you are feeling the balls of your feet, you're reaching with the crown of your head, you are connected up to the big chi. So don't hang on to it, just let it go through. And you then learn to, to direct that energy. It's not your chi, you are just borrowing it. It's like breath, you know, you don't hang on to it, you just borrow it. So that energy is just passing through. And so you want to learn to be able to ride that particular wave so that 
you can you can do it with Elon. Okay, cool. I approve. Dennis. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been rereading your book again. And I've been thinking about how I've been charting my progress. I, 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 I've been doing Tai Chi for maybe 10, 12 years. And, uh, you know, basically I started doing Tai Chi because I was told to do something to get out of the house more. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, for the first first three or four years, I just plodded along, and I, I I went because I enjoyed the class. I had a good teacher, and I enjoyed doing the class. And you know, I struggled along. I, I had a hard time learning the form, but I enjoyed going to class. I had a good teacher, and I was lucky enough. I had a teacher that, you know, he, he not only taught the form, but he also taught us a little bit about the martial aspects. I mean, he wasn't teaching us how to fight, but in the forms, he would teach us you know, what, what the martial energies were, you know, he taught us a ward off, he taught, he taught us where he, he wasn't teaching us to fight, but he was teaching us the energies behind it, you know? Right. And then, and then after five years, remember, we were having discussions about, uh, uh, I saw a show on uh, PBS about, about neural, about uh, the neural pathways and stuff. And he said, hey, there's a book out by this guy, Rick Barrett. He said, you should read it. You find it interesting. And I read the book. And then, and, then, and then a couple of months later, I met you up at Kampala. And when I read that book, it was like it just opened the doors completely, you know. And I, my progress in Tai Chi, it was just a whole, lit up a whole, whole new thing for me. And, and, and my pro, it just changed, it opened doors for me. And Tai Chi got really serious for me. And then, like I said, I, I, I just reread the book again after doing the classes with you. And, and, I realize how much more I understand from the first time I read the book, you know? So it's like just to chart my progress now. And even now I have, I know realize there's so much more to learn. Like I, I was reading the passage in the book la last night and yes, there's more, I understand more, but there's so much more I have to learn, you know? Uh, and I don't always get everything every time. And, and I know learning is this late in life, I'll never be a grand master that can, send somebody across the room with one touch of my finger with gin. I mean, I'll, I'll never be that level, I don't think, you know. And I can never find it every time. There are times that, yeah, I can, I'm on my game and 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 I, I'll, I'll go to a Tai Chi class and I just feel completely lit up and buzzing with gin. And then there's other times I just can't connect, you know. But it's, um, all you can do is keep trying. I mean, you know, some nights I'm not there and I, I, don't, I don't connect. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm on top of it. And it's, uh, you just got to keep trying and keep practicing with it. So it's, you know, you just keep trying. That's all you can do. Great, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you for that. Just enjoy the journey. You know, all of us are yes. where we are. And we just, it, it, it's a, an infinite journey. It's, it's one, there is no end point on it. It's, it just keeps, keeps the deeper you go, the more there is to discover. And the, if you can uh, adopt that beginner's mind with it, you can, I, I, I find such new stuff every day. Wait, you know? wait, wait, wait a minute wait, here. Wait, wait, what? There's no end game here? None. I None. mean, oh, yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, you know, learning about right. IT and learning the form, you can always learn something new. It's like doing the form, it's like you can always cut it in half. You, you know, like the ward off just seems like, yeah, you take a step and you wave your arm. No, 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 it's not that. There's, you know, you <laughs> move your arm it. and you make a step and then you got to turn your hip a certain way. You move your back. It's a, you can keep cutting, you know, it's like you have the opening, you have the opening with 19 steps already. You know? <laughs> it's not just wave your arm. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. I got to cut you off here. We're, we're running out of time. Valerie, you had okay. something. Um, I was going to say that I find, for me anyway, that if I really maintain those, the, the poles in opposition, the reaching up and the reaching down, that that expands my uh, capacity for the energy that, uh, you know, it's, it's like, I feel like an obelisk, right? Just this, uh, and very solid, but not contained. I, I don't have words for it, that feeling. And it's, it's quite marvelous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, anybody else before we sign off here? 
Okay. Thank you all so much. Okay. <laughs> Happy New Year. Great. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Love New you Year. all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.